Hi, in this video we're going to look at a bit of a problem I've come across uh, when you're using conditional formatting icon sets. What I want to do is compare these two columns. They contain sales values for these different products and I'm comparing February with January and I want to show arrows, green up arrow to show an increase in sales and a down arrow to show a decrease in sales. So you'd think that this would be fairly simple. Now, what we're gonna do is select these cells to apply the conditional formatting to. So if I select the top cell, control shift down arrow key, then I'm gonna to go to conditional formatting. This is on the home tab. My concepts, more rules, and I'm gonna select the arrows icon set and change type of comparison I'm doing to number and you might think it's pretty easy you can just say well when the sale value is greater than the unit sold in January show get rid of that zero show green arrow and when it's equal to so if I do greater than or equal to that value then um, it could show an uh, amber arrow less than that it will show a red arrow so I kind of click on OK and it doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is it's comparing all of those all of these values with the top value if we go back to conditional formatting manage rules and edit the rule you can see that this is an absolute reference which means that every as as the uh, conditional formatting is copied down it's still going to refer to or compare to AI6. Now, one of the annoyances with conditional formatting in this context is that you can't use relative references. If I was to take those dollars out, I can use F4 to do that, and clicked on OK, I get this nasty little message saying you can't use relative references. So this way definitely doesn't work. Uh, it's not going to provide the solution for us. Uh, I'm going to just click on OK and I'm going to in fact delete that conditional formatting. So one way out of this is to actually create a formula in another column. If you can't do that for whatever reason, don't worry, later on in the video I will show you how to eventually apply the conditional formatting to this column, but it is more complex. But anyway, it's quite simple. If you can afford another column in your table, this is dead easy. We would just create a little formula to subtract the January value from the February value. So I can copy that down. And then with that still selected, I can go to conditional formatting, icon sets, more rules, select my arrow rules, go to number, so that should be greater than, so I can say, if it's greater than zero, you get green. If it's equal to zero, it's the same. Less than zero, red. Click on OK, and that works beautifully. If I didn't want to show the numbers, that's pretty easy to do. Go back to conditional formatting, this time manage rules, edit rule, show icon set only. Just up there, click on OK, click on OK, and there we are. So that's fine if you can have that extra column. If not, this is what you've got to do. Now, because we can't use relative references within our formula, one way around that is to use the offset function. Now, I don't know if you've used the offset function before, but what it does is say, where's your starting point? So for example, this cell. And how many rows or columns do you want to move from that starting point? We can therefore create a little form that will eventually refer to each of these values as the conditional formatting is copied down. So let's see how this works. I'm going to do the whole thing in a separate column so you can see how the offset works. But essentially, we don't need that column for the end result. We're going to copy the formula that we create here into the conditional formatting. So here we go, equals offset. So my reference, my starting point is 
AI6, which would need to be fixed, comma, and then you're going to say how many rows up or down you're going to move from that position. Well, that's going to be different, obviously. One row down here, two rows down here, three down rows down here. Now, one way of achieving that is to use the row function. Now, the row function very simply just returns the row number for the row you're currently in. So we're currently in row six, so the row function returns six. Now, for this formula, we don't want to move down any rows. We want to refer to that value there. So essentially, it would be minus six. The row number minus six would be zero, so we'd refer to that. Now, when this formula gets copied down, it will be row number of seven minus six, which would give us one. So you're moving one row down. So that, that will work for us as the, as the formula is copied down. Comma. Now, we don't want to move any columns. We want to stay in the same column, so zero. And we only want to return one cell, so the height and the width of the range we want to return is basically one cell, one height, one for width. Um, you can see that they're non-mandatory arguments there with square brackets around them. Uh, one is the default for both of those, so I can just close the bracket. Uh, control enter to get the answer, but stay in the cell. Double click to fill down, and you can see all it's doing is just returning that value uh, for each row for units sold January. So I could use this within my conditional formatting. It doesn't contain any relative references. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that formula. Control C to copy. And then I'm going to select all the cells in that column. Conditional formatting. Icon sets or rules. And usual thing, select my arrows, number, number, and I'm going to say uh, greater than on this one, and paste in my formula, paste in my formula, and click on OK. And it still doesn't work. <laughs> now, the reason I think it's not working is something to do with the row function in there. It's not quite operating properly, it's not increasing properly. So this is where things get a little bit time consuming and you might want to resort at this point to using an extra column. But if you can't, you need to follow the rest of the instructions. We're going to undo what we've done there. So what you've got to do is actually just apply the conditional formatting to the first cell. So here we go. Manage rules. No, not manage rules. Icon sets, small rules. Choose your arrows. And we're going to say number, number, greater than, paste in our formula, paste in our formula. Okay, click on OK. So it works for this. Now, essentially, what we're going to do is copy that conditional formatting using Format Painter to these other cells. So you think, oh, that'd be easy. So what I'll do is I select that cell, go to the Format Painter, and then I'll paint over the rest of the cells but it still doesn't work. We're getting a different result, but it's not working properly. You can see it's not working. These should be exactly the same as these, and they're not. So I'll undo that. Now this is where it gets painful. So the only way I found of doing it anyway is to select that cell. I'll just press escape so we haven't got the marching ants. Select that cell, double click on the format painter, and unbelievably click on each individual cell. So this really isn't gonna work for huge data sets. I think you're going to have to resort to the extra column. And if someone knows of a better way of achieving this, then let us know in a comment. But this is the way I found of achieving the result that I want. Click on the Format Painter again to turn it off. And you can see these are exactly as these now. It's proved it's actually worked. Okay, well, hopefully someone that's going to be helpful. Let us know if there's a better way. Thanks for listening.